Fantastic. We're going to go to Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter 4 this morning. Proverbs chapter 4. It's quite interesting at the moment in my, um, uh, and I think uh, before I spoke a couple of weeks ago, I, I said this, one of the things that I really felt God speaking to me about is, is revisiting some of the stuff that he spoke to me back when I first, when Philip and I first started here. And, um, and even probably before that, actually, in, in some of the early stages of my uh, journey of faith and following Jesus. And I want to go to this, this passage, um, Proverbs 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4.23, um, if there's anything, uh, one, of the, one of the verses I've probably, I've had a number of them, but this has been one that has been a huge one in my journey of faith, and I want to read it this morning, I'm going to read it out of two different, uh, three different uh, versions, I've only got two of them up, up on the screen, first one, uh, so this is Proverbs 4 verse 23, and it says there, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. So that's in the New Living Translation, in the NIV, the New International Version. It's not so new anymore now. Um, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And then in the Passion Translation, that same verse says this, So above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. So I want to talk, um, I've got got two Sundays um, in a row, so that's going to be awesome. I want to just, just briefly over those two Sundays, I want to talk about the issue of heart health. Heart health. So we did CCs earlier, we're doing HH today. So heart health. Okay, so I wanna, I'm, I'm going to ask some interaction now. Okay, so this is going to be a bit different for you. So just with the people nearby, why don't you turn around and, um, and just ask each other the question. Come up with a few, uh, a few answers. I'll take uh, three from, from each group. So maybe, I don't know, I, every time I give people numbers to get into groups, everyone does what they want. So just get into small groups, uh, have a chat amongst you. And this is the question. This is the question. What are some of the things that affect our heart health? Okay? So I don't mean physical eating food and getting fat, um, eating fat and cholesterol and all that kind of thing that affects your heart, lack of exercise, all those kinds of things. I'm talking about your heart. Okay. Will it help if I define what heart is? Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. So in this verse, the Hebrew word there is... Lab, lab is the root word for heart. It's the commonly used one throughout the Old Testament. And what it includes is it, it's talking about the center of who you are. So it includes your, your thoughts, your wills, your discernment, your affections. So it's your heart. It's the center of who you are. It's what makes you you. Some of us in our English, we would probably say something like soul. But it's deeper than that because it also includes uh, the aspect of your spirit that's within you. So in terms of um, your understanding, it's what is going on inside of you that influences how you live your life. That's your heart. Okay? So it's not that physical thing that beats in your chest. Although some would say that there's some of you that may be contained in that physical heart of you. And, you know, But... What we're talking about is that particular thing. So the center of your decision-making, the things that influence you, where your affections come from, where your emotions come from, when your decision-making comes from, that center that makes you, you. Okay? So the question is, within your group, what are the, some of the things that we face in life that can affect our heart health? Okay? Is that clear? All right. Okay. Here you go. Small groups. You've got uh, three minutes. Three minutes. I'm giving you a time frame because otherwise you'll chat about everything else. So uh, three minutes. All right. Who wants to? What group's got some answers? Anyone got some answers? By the way, this is not a test, and there are no right answers or wrong answers. 
there'll be some I appreciate and some I probably won't, but um, that doesn't mean anything. All right, who's first? Who would like to give me some thoughts? Patrick does. Okay, Patrick, what do you got? That's four. I think I only asked for three, but um, do you want to say it again? Uh, good eats, good sleeps, and good peeps, uh, all with God, good times of God. Okay. So good eats, good sleeps, and good peeps. Okay. It rhymes, apparently. Great. Cool. Okay, Nikki. Sorry, coming back with the microphone. Um, when we let our past experiences influence our responses instead of letting God's voice be stronger because we haven't spent our time with him, so then his voice isn't the key voice in our world. It affects our heart and our responses. Okay. Cool, cool. That's deep. There's a lot of stuff in that one. Yeah. Anyone else? Debbie? <laughs> Ours was a little bit similar to Nikki's, but... Being able to discern God's voice and also being aware of how we are responding to people in any situation. Okay. We had some things here that affect your heart in a bad way, and it was unforgiveness, loneliness, um, depression, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Right. In today. Oh, you were part of that group? That group? That group? Awesome. Over here. Well done. Um, we had, if you're not like receiving from Christ in your relationship with Jesus, that makes it a lot harder um, if you're trying to find that in other people. Um, so that was one of them. And then the relationships, so the people that you keep around you and that you share the dreams and things that you have with and making sure that they're speaking good things into your life. And then we also had similar vein to what Nikki was saying of like trauma or things that you may have picked up that you haven't processed. And so you're actually carrying that with you unnecessarily. Mm. Great. Anyone else? Any other group over this side wants to add anything? Anyone else want to add anything? Just one thing, but <laughs> people's opinions that you let affect you. Yeah. It's pretty with someone else over here. Did I hear one over here? Things that we, we watch and meditate on and, yeah, things we think about can affect our heart. And your self-talk. So you're saying the things we give ourselves to. So the things we give ourselves to generally would be worship, and whether it be positive or negative, because the things we give ourselves to is the stuff that comes out. Okay. Awesome. Anyone else? Oh. Addiction. Anything that isn't glorifying to God that you're addicted to. Cool. Yeah. Dave, it's football, quizzes. Yeah. I've got nothing to say now. I was just going to say physical activity, like actual body movement and it affects sports. your heart. Yeah. 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 Cool. Grumpy without them. Yeah, absolutely. Music. Music. Society norms and peer pressure. Awesome. The values that we have that we were taught or grow up with and the values that we create for ourselves and also the inputs that we allow to come into our life, social media, whatever. Awesome. Okay. She started to flow now. It's like the three monkeys, what you see, what you hear, what you say. Okay. Got you thinking. The whole point of that was to get us thinking about this because 
I can give you a whole bunch of stuff, but if you don't engage in, in, engage your brain and think about it for yourself, um, what I present is not very helpful um, because all it is is information. So one of the things that I've found is super important for me, and it's something um, I've had to learn as I've got older because it wasn't something that I was taught when I was young, was this idea of being uh, of taking time to self-reflect. Has anyone learned that skill or have doesn't don't understand what I mean by that? So what I mean is is we go through life and stuff happens. Is anyone with me on that? Okay, cool. Okay, we on common ground. Okay, stuff stuff happens in life. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's mediocre, sometimes it's just life. And and we go through life and just the normal day happens. All right? But if we don't take time uh, what I've learned, if we don't take time in our ordinary everyday do- life to reflect on on what's happened in our day or in our week, or if there's something specific that has happened in a day that's quite um, uh, quite big, like you've had a conflict or you've had um, something happen that affected you emotionally and you felt that, if we don't take time to process those and think about those moments... One of the questions I've learned uh, to ask myself is, why did I react that way in that situation? And allow myself to reflect on what was going on internally in my inner world when I faced that situation. So to go back into, and often, have any of you laid awake at night and thinking about how you could have changed what you said in that particular situation? Yeah, I think it's a common human issue that sometimes we're in situations and what comes out of us, later on we go, I really wish I could have pulled that back in at that moment. But it's spoken and it's out there and it's landing somewhere. And then we reflect on it later and I've learned to give myself time to be able to reflect on it and go, where was that coming from? Okay? Okay. Because what I've learned is, is if, if, if this proverb, if what uh, Solomon recorded here in terms of wisdom to help us, the idea of the proverbs was help us to live life and to reign in life, to get to a point in our journey and following Jesus where no matter what we face and whatever we go through, we have this ability to, uh, to rise above it or to reign over it. So the songs we're singing this morning, that even though there's a mountain, God sees that mountain able to move. Even though there's trouble or there's a storm, God has the ability to shift a storm. You know, the idea that no matter what we're facing, we have this ability to walk through it with God and not let it destroy us or take away the joy of life or take away life in, it, in, in its essence and the abundance that God wants for us. Does that make sense? And so we've got to, you know, I think sometimes in our busy worlds, we're so busy rushing from one thing to another and and we get to the end of the day and we're so tired, we fall into bed and the day in terms of a learning experience for us of growing in our knowledge of ourselves and in who God has created us to be, we miss the opportunities to take the learning moments that are there for us by reflecting. Because I look at this and I say, if I'm guarding my heart, so I take this one, return it the other way. If I want my life to be full of life and to be full of joy and to be full of peace and full of love, then that flows out of my innermost being. That flows out of my heart. So if I don't take time to reflect on my heart and the condition of my heart and what's going on in my heart, then I'm actually not living, potentially not living the best kind of life. Are you with me? And so for me, that's where this, uh, where this sits. So it's interesting, the word that's translated uh, wellspring or course or it flows out of, this, this Hebrew word in there um, that most translations would have as the issues of life or that thing that flows out of us, is actually a Hebrew word, yasa, which is translated as seasons, but particularly springtime. 
So the idea that the, the writer was saying here is if you guard your heart, you can live in a place of springtime. The season of spring. So what, what are some of the characteristics of springtime? New life, growth. In New Zealand, the, one of the best things is driving down a country, country road and the little lambs, right? Bouncing across the field and banging into mum for a drink and then some of them just lying there going, <laughs> without a care in the world. And then, then I love it at our house because our trees that have lost all their leaves and been dead for winter, they start to blossom and then the leaves come out. And so there's this idea of fresh growth, of new starts, of new beginnings, of new life, of, of that flow coming out of our lives. So this idea here that the, the, the writer of Proverbs is saying is if you guard your heart, that can be the perpetual season that you live in of new growth, of new life, of experiencing new things, of, of moving into the new and to the next of what God's got for us. Now, how many of you want that to be the situation, the season that you live in? So for me, my encouragement this morning is, let's be people who take atten pay attention to our hearts. As you've mentioned, there are so many things that can get into our hearts and can affect them. I just, this is hugely important. So I want to read a couple of passages. Matthew 15. So Jesus talks about this a lot. So he takes what, what the, the, proverb, uh, the writer of the Proverbs says in, in terms of above all else, make it your first priority to guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And he goes this in Matthew 15, verses 18 and 19. And he said, but the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, or sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. So all of the issues of sin don't come from the devil. They come from my heart. Oh. In the Old Testament, the writers say, watch out for your heart because it's deceitfully wicked above all else. So the importance for us to look at our heart, the other promise, the great promise of God is that, that when we come to Jesus, he will take our heart of stone of that deceitfulness and he'll give us a new heart. Okay? The challenge with that is that you and I have to deal with the stuff that's going on in that process. In Luke chapter 5, uh, chapter 6, sorry, verse 43, Jesus says this, a good tree can't produce bad fruit. But a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes, and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. This is the kicker of the statement. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Now, I just said before, I said, you know, we've had those conversations and we say something and then we want to pull it back, right? I think all of us identify with those moments. What that says to me, if I'm reflecting on my world, is that there's something in my heart that is causing that to come out as a response. Does that make sense? So then I have got that question I asked before, what's going on inside of me that caused that to come out? And the great thing for all of us is if you're following Jesus, you don't have to answer that question just on your own. Because Holy Spirit wants to help you to identify what is going on in your heart that is causing that to happen. that make sense and so I want to encourage us today let's be people who make time in our worlds to reflect on our lives who make time in our lives 
to sit down and analyze and think about and allow Holy Spirit to reveal the condition of our heart. Because if you and I want to live in perpetual springtime and springtime all the time in our lives, that says to me that there's a priority of guarding your heart. So the ideal is we get to a position where we don't just address what's already in our hearts, but we also protect our hearts because that's the, the concept of this, this idea of guarding is one, guarding you're looking at what's already there, but you're also stopping anything new coming in. All right, so that's where a lot of the things you talked about today are some of the things that can affect us, and then you've also got the things that are already affected us. Two things. You know, one of the things I've found um, hugely important in, uh, in my world is doing this. is taking time to reflect, but also taking time to be proactive around building my heart health. So I'm just giving us a challenge this week. Next week I want to go into some more practical things that you and I can do to one, guard our hearts, protect it from what goes on in the world in our lives today so that we're not allowing new things to come in. So practical things about that. And second thing practical is about how we can deal with the things that are already affecting our heart. So there's two areas, and I want to talk about those next week. But this week, I wanted to put us in the framework of the challenge of saying, if I want to live in the abundant life that Jesus has said he's got for us, a perpetual springtime, then let's take the time to examine our hearts, to allow Holy Spirit to reveal what's in us, that's affecting how we live our lives. Amen. Right, let's pray. Uh, God, thank you for your, uh, your presence here this morning. I thank you for every person here. I thank you that your desire is for all of us to live with a freedom in our lives that is full of new life, that is abundant life, because that's what you came to give us. And so I pray for all of us that you would help us in this journey of faith of following Jesus to take the time to reflect, to take the time to allow you to speak to us about the condition of our hearts. God, because we want to be people who are carriers of hope, who are carriers of joy, who are carriers of peace to the world around us. But Lord, we know that often our own hearts and our own stuff that we carry affects our ability to do that. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, to help us as we journey with you. Thank you, God. Amen.